Hello everyone, welcome to Accessible IT Solution. So in this lab, in this video, we'll be discussing about the MPBGP, that is MPLS. So this is the first video on MPLS in this series. So we will be looking at how to configure the MPBGP later on this uh, whole series. So let's uh, look at the topology. So before we look at the topology, I'm assuming that you have the basic knowledge of MPLS. So MPLS works on label distribution protocol that is known as LDP. So I'm assuming that you know that how MPLS works. So anyhow, we will be configuring how to enable the MPLS, but we won't be looking in depth like how the MPLS works or the functioning of the MPLS network protocol. So let's look at the topology now. So this is my R1, R2, R3 and R4. So these are my service providers, routers. So this is the this whole thing I am assuming that uh, it is a service core, service provider core. So now R1, R2, R3 and R4 have the loopbacks of 1, 2, 3 and 4 as well as the interface IP addresses are 100.1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively. So now once we configure the EIJP protocol, we have the communication between the loopback. So all the four loopbacks will have the communication based on routing. So it's based on routing now. So once we enable the MPLS now, after enabling the MPLS, it's no more based on routing. So if you communicating between this router one and router four, it not not based on routing it it is based on label distribution protocol that is labels so from now so once you enable the mpls it's no more based on routing protocol so it will be only on label distribution protocol so it will be just switching the labels instead of looking into the routing table so it has a different table where the labels have been stored locally so that's how the it works the MPLS. So once we have the MPLS neighborship with R1, 2, 3, and 4, we're forming the neighborship between R1 and 4 directly. So there is no need of routing. So it's automatically being done by the MPLS, which allows us to form a neighborship, IBGP neighborship between R1 and R4. We will see how to configure this one too. So once we have this neighborship enabled up and running now, my core is ready to connect with customer. So now I am ready to connect with customer. So now the router which is connecting the customer, these routers are known as provider's edge. So it's something as represents as PE. And these routers which are connecting as a customers, these routers are known as customers edge, that is CE. So later on these uh, series, video series, we will be referring PE as providers edge and CE as a customer edge. So once these two configurations have been done, BGP, we will be running the BGP between the customer as well as the providers edge. So everything here. So you can see that AS number has been here privately assigned. So these are private AS numbers. So now when we configure the BGP between prov providers edge and the customers edge, now we are able to communicate between R5, 6, 7 and 8. So we are assuming that now our customer is able to communicate from here to here, R8 to R5, 6, 7, 8 and everything are interconnected but we need to verify it the only one thing is to verify is that r2 shouldn't know that r5 exists r3 shouldn't know that r5 6 7 8 exist exist that means r2 and r3 should not have routes of r5 r6 r7 and r8 so without knowing the routes of these customers, I am able to, my customers are able to communicate within their branches. 
so then only we assume that we have successfully configured our mp bgp vpn so now that you understand what uh, what is the outcome of this lab now we will be starting configuring the start configuration of our lab from the next video series thank you very much for watching